Whenever I show a, give a lecture, I show pictures from, let's say, from the Hubble Space Telescope. A picture of a cluster of galaxies. I mean, the the poetry of it, it, it the poet where well, we both both talked about the poetry of science, but the the spiritual inspiration you get from looking at a picture of a cluster of galaxies located five billion light years away from us, where every dot in that picture is a galaxy. The light from those stars left those stars before our sun and earth formed which means that now many of the stars in that picture don't exist anymore and if there were civilizations around those stars each of those galaxies contains a hundred billion stars any civilization that existed around those stars no longer may exist the, it, it just opens your mind to wonder and so i actually feel very strongly that while science per se may not provide the direct consolation it can and it should provide a spiritual not only wonder but it should provide a, spiritual, a consolation look when we we tell our kids fairy tales to console them we tell them to make their life fun we talk about santa claus the easter bunny but then we decide that you know what it's better for them to know how the world really works and it may be a little less consoling but in fact knowing that they're in control of their lives actually is empowering and many of us if you're a good parent you want to teach your kids how to become empowered and yet so but religion and the, and in religion they're often talked about the flock the children it effectively treats you like a child it says it's better for you to believe a fable than reality we are so lucky to be alive today and endowed with a consciousness where we, for whatever fortuitous reasons, on a, on a random star in a random galaxy in the middle of nowhere, we are able to evolve a consciousness, live on a relatively quiescent planet. And so I, I actually think science can provide a real consolation by saying, look, once you accept reality, it's liberating. The great thing about science is not knowing. That's what makes it exciting, is that there are mysteries remaining to be discovered. We don't understand the mystery of consciousness. We can talk about it, but, but we have no idea how it arises, that amazing that you have electrical impulses in your brain, which clearly, by the way, are very different than computers, vastly different than computers, because you can, you can argue from a physics perspective that if you took a, built a digital computer that had the storage capability of the human brain and the, and, and the processing power, it would require 10 terawatts. The human brain uses about 10 watts. So somehow, we are a million, million, 10 million, million times more efficient than digital computers. We don't understand that. That's amazing.